It's every day, bro, with the Pierre-Luc Dubois flow. Eight vid on YouTube in two weeks, never done before. And I think if you're still sticking around here, you haven't clicked off because of that cringe intro. I appreciate you. But we're talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois again here today because... Lo and behold, it's some more trade discussion and more teams being brought up into the mix. In fact, this time it's not even a new team, it's the New York Rangers, who have been discussed in these Pierre-Luc Dubois conversations before. But we have ourselves what is a brand new article published on the New York Post by Larry Brooks. The article is this. The Rangers landing Pierre-Luc Dubois could come at a painful cost, and it was uploaded two days ago on January 9th. This article is absolutely insane, it goes over some ridiculous proposals, but, you know, just to get our fair share of it, let's just go over the context first and foremost. Pierre-Luc Dubois, if you don't know, third overall pick in the 2016 NHL entry draft, he is a 22-year-old guy who is a very good NHL player today. 6 foot 3 200 plus pounds 49 points in 70 games last year 10 points in 10 games in the playoffs he's been trending up and up in his overall play in his own zone and in the offensive zone and he's in a position where he probably wants a change of scenery and it's been very publicly revealed that a trade would be something that he would honestly be okay with and so, because he's a center and the New York Rangers' long-term needs include those playing at the center position, Larry Brooks adds his own two cents to the conversation that has ensued as to the New York Rangers potentially being interested in this guy. In fact, he says straight up, yeah, the Rangers are monitoring the situation in Columbus, where yet another marquee player has made it known that he has no interest in signing on for the long term. But if you want to think the Blue Shirts are going to be able to acquire Dubois, the first line center selected third overall in 2016 while the current Rangers president John Davidson was running the Blue Jackets operation without feeling pain in the transaction, then you're delusional. So our conversation steers into the direction of returns. What exactly could the New York Rangers trade away to Columbus that they would actually say yes to and be willing to give up Pierre-Luc Dubois in return? In fact, this is a conversation we've spoken about with tons of other NHL teams already. We spoke about this several times, but I saw some Habs fans going out there just saying, oh, take our garbage. Here's Wheel, Norlander, and two picks. Give us Dubois. No, it's not going to work like that. At the very least, if you're going to be Columbus, you're not getting anything less than a solidified NHL roster player today, maybe even two, some good draft picks and some top tier prospects. You're going to have all that stuff combined because Pierre-Luc Dubois today is a very good player. Pierre-Luc Dubois in two years is going to be better. Pierre-Luc Dubois in his prime could be one of the top two-way centers in the entire NHL. So, for the New York Rangers, hey, Larry Brooks goes over it and says, yes, the Blue Jackets would probably like a center in return. Immediately, your mind leaps to Philip Cheadle. So maybe a combination of Cheadle and Matthew Robertson or Tony D'Angelo? But what if they want Keandre Miller, or would you prefer to substitute Vitaly Kravtsov in there too? Of course, these are some preliminary ideas brought up by Brooks, but he goes into the big nitty-gritty and brings up this idea immediately afterwards. If the Rangers ask about Dubois, then the Jackets would be pretty obligated to ask for Alexi Lafreniere in return, don't you think? And if Lafreniere is walled off, Capo Caco would have to be next in line. And because Caco is a wing, while Dubois plays the middle, it figures that the Finn alone wouldn't be enough. So Caco and Cheadle? Caco and Miller? Caco, Cheadle plus? The price would be that high. Link in the description over to the full article. They do indeed explore a few other topics as well. It's a good read, so go ahead and check out this New York Post piece. But that's our idea here. If the Rangers are going out there, all the stuff that we spoke about earlier, Keandre Miller, Kravtsov, D'Angelo, Picks, whatever, it's not enough. You gotta get some franchise cornerstone pieces going into the next generation's worth of hockey back, right? The guys who are already locked in and loaded, yeah, you're not gonna trade those guys. Artemi Panarin, sorry buddy, staying over in New York. He left Columbus in the first place, there's no way that guy is waving to go back. Ryan Strom's a guy who had some good production last year, but... It was his first year playing alongside of Artemi Panarin, and that is a very big contribution as to why he was able to explode on the score sheet. Plus, he's got a two-year deal, so who knows if that's even really on the table here. Because Mika Zibanejad is over here also with an NMC, he signed on for the next two years at 27 years old, there's a room to debate that when you're trading away a young star, what's only really suitable is another young star back who is also probably very good today. 
So Capo Caco and Lafreniere, two guys on their entry-level deals, they make sense in this context. It's just a question on whether or not you would want to give that up. Remember, Capo Caco was a second overall draft lottery win the Rangers had in 2019. Lafreniere was a 2020 draft lottery win, first overall one year later. The Rangers have lucked themselves into getting these assets, and if you're in a position where you're saying, okay, in five years, let's say we re-sign Mika Zibanejad, okay, so he's coming back on the squad. In five years, what does our top six look like? We have Chris Kreider in there because he's making 6.5 until 2027, my goodness. You have Artemi Panarin in there, you have Mika Zibanejad. You have Alexi Lafreniere, you have Capo Caco, you have Philip Cheadle, then you also still have some of the other guys that you might be willing to thrust into a role. Vitaly Kravtsov, who knows? But of those names we mentioned, it's only really Mika Zibanejad who is strictly a center. Philip Cheadle plays center sometimes, but there's a debate to be had as to whether or not it would be more beneficial to trade one of these wing players, an exclusive wing player like a Capo Caco or an Alexi Lafreniere, for Pierre-Luc Dubois, who could be a Selkie winner as soon as in two years, who could already become a number one center on most NHL teams, and who still has so much more to go through. The question is, would you give up a Capo Caco who had a poor freshman year in the NHL, but who is probably going to get better, who was the best Ranger in the bubble, and who still has so much more to prove because he's only 19. Alexi Lafreniere is also 19 years old, and this is a guy who was already NHL ready a year ago. He was dominating the World Juniors, he was dominating the QMJHL, he is going to play in the NHL this season, and he plays a very similar style as to what David Quinn actually wants out of his young players. Physical, gritty, willing to engage in board battles, etc., while also having some very good offensive tools. If you're giving up on the long-term future of that, for a number one center today, and in the long-term future as well, then Pierre-Luc Dubois, it makes sense, it's just a matter of whether or not you think it's valuable enough to make that change. Because in my opinion, I think Larry Brooks has a point here. If it's Kako and Dubois one for one, I don't think it goes through. If it's Lafreniere for Dubois one for one, I don't know if that goes through either, man. Like, to be honest, because even though the value of an Alexi Lafreniere is so astronomically high, at the end of the day, Pierre-Luc Dubois is an established NHL forward who is already just on the cusp of cracking that point-per-game mark. He was already a point-per-game in the postseason, so there's only room to go up here, right? So, even if it's Lafreniere for Dubois, I don't know if it's enough, and that's not a slight on Laffey, it's just how it is, in my opinion. If it's gonna get done with this context, I think it'd have to be an Alexi Lafreniere and a first for Dubois, or a Capo Caco and another asset for Dubois. Heck, maybe even for Lafreniere, it's not even a pick, it's that other asset being added on, like Larry Brooks suggests. And just based off of the rhetoric we have seen from New York Rangers media and management, I'd be very surprised if they ended up trading Capo Caco or Lafreniere anytime in the next decade and a half. And even if it's for a Pierre-Luc Dubois, you know, it would just shock me so much to the core to acknowledge the idea that a Caco or a Lafreniere trade could even be considered that, yeah, I don't really think this is going to happen, right? This is probably not going to happen. We're probably not going to see Dubois in a Rangers jersey unless the Rangers go out there and offer the world that is outside of those lottery wins that they got over the past two years. Because, hey... Aside from that, there's only really a few other assets the Columbus Blue Jackets would actually accept, in my opinion. You could get me with Ryan Strom, but I don't really think there's enough there, even with a few extra picks and prospects. There's the Artemi Panarin, but he's probably not going to wave. There's the Mika Zibanejad, he's probably not going to wave. So, what other options do you have? It's the stuff that the Rangers probably would not even want to think about touching. So, with that being established, talk to me in the comments what you think about this Lafreniere, Caco, Dubois thing. Would you do it if you're the Rangers? Would you do it if you're the Blue Jackets? If you're a fan of either of those teams, tell me in the comments if you would do that. So, also give the justifications. In fact, if you're not even a Rangers or a Blue Jackets fan, just let me know your thoughts in the comment section about this idea as a whole, because it certainly is a big one that we can all have our own fair two cents about. So, yeah, go over, read the article that Larry Brooks posts. He talks about a whole bunch of other stuff as well, not just Dubois and the Rangers. But for now, that concludes what is the eighth video on Pierre-Luc Dubois in the past two weeks. Who knows if we're going to have to make a ninth one and I have to keep up this Jake Paul kind of thing. But, you know, we do this because it's fun. We have conversations and I like having these talks about different NHL topics. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.